and I am delighted to be with you today. We are talking about a very important subject and an idea or philosophy that absolutely can positively change your life. So I want to welcome you to this special session that we're doing here together and to ask you, just checking in, make sure that uh, everyone is here and we're all getting connected. So here's what I suggest that you do for this time that we're going to invest here together. Whether you're watching it live or whether you're watching the replay, what I suggest that you do is get yourself a pen and some paper and get ready to take notes. But more importantly, and really what my desire for you is to have you follow through. So I'll give you some suggestions and I'm going to also recommend that you follow through with what I'm going to talk about today. So we're talking about how to turn fear into faith. So based on that subject line, I'm going to ask you this question. Do or have any of you ever experienced fear in your life? Now, whether it was fear of the unknown, whether it was fear of starting your business, whether it was the fear of success, have any of you experienced fear or any kind of fear in your life? Now, type it in the little chat box there on the left hand side. Now, the truth is everyone experiences fear. Doesn't matter who you are or where you are, everyone is gonna experience fear. But the truth is when you do decide, when you make a decision, you're gonna do something that you've never done before, whether it's to become an author, and that's what I did over 20 years ago, whether it's to incorporate your own business, which is something else that I did over 26 years ago, whether it's to buy a dream home and I didn't have any money to buy a dream home. Anytime you are stretching yourself Anytime you make a decision to grow, to go for something you've never done before, you will absolutely come up against fear. It happens to everyone. It doesn't matter where you are or what you've been through. Everyone goes through fear. All right. So who do we have on the call here together today? We have Victoria. We have Joanna Kinner. We have uh, Michael, Patricia, Casey, Carol. Wonderful. Okay. You've all experienced the fear. Beate, Vladdy's here. All right. Great guys. So what I'd like to, what I, what I'd like to do is I want to walk you through how to deal with the fear when it shows up, why it's there, and then how you combat it. All right. How do you combat that fear? And really what you're doing is you're turning the fear into faith. So as I mentioned, fear shows up in your life the moment you decide to do something you've never done before, or it could be that you've decided to do something, but yet you've had a bad experience with it before. I mean, those are a couple scenarios where fear will come up. I'll give you an example of that from my own life. And I actually just gave a whole bunch of examples. I had the fear when I was writing my first book, had the fear when I incorporated my business, had the fear when I purchased a home and I didn't have any money. But I remember another time when I had fear in my life and it was when I decided that I was ready for a healthy, happy, loving and lasting relationship. You see, I had gone through a number of different relationships. Maybe you've had this experience as well. I'd gone through a number of different relationships and all of them ended the same way. They ended, right? Some of them I desired to have end and then there were others that I didn't. But ultimately, there was pain involved, whether I ended the relationship or didn't end the relationship. I remember reaching a point in my life, and we're going back to somewhere around 1994. And I reached this point in my life in 1994 where I created a paradigm based on what I chose to bring forth from a past experience. And that paradigm was that relationships equal massive pain. Well, if you have a belief that relationships equal massive pain, do you think you're going to want to get in one? Or do you think you're going to have and actually create a very healthy, loving, lasting relationship? Of course not. And I realized that that paradigm was there. But I decided to dig a little bit deeper because underneath those paradigms, there's a reason for it, right? I mean, we create it, whether it's false you know, we just create it out of some false idea or whether it's actually based on something. And so when that occurs, you realize, okay, there's a cause here. And the cause was that I had experienced all these relationship breakups. But where did it come from? What was the underlying 
or the deeper paradigm that was really causing the undesirable result. That deeper paradigm was the following. The deeper paradigm was, I didn't believe I was worthy of love. Now, I want you to think about that right now. Worthiness is something that we all have the ability to feel, but not everyone feels it. For example, many people don't feel they're worthy of success. Many people don't feel they're worthy of having abundance in their life. Many people feel they're not worthy of a loving relationship either. Now, where did that come from? Somewhere in the past. It's how the paradigms are built. It happened before, but it's there. And it's there and it's real and it's producing the results in our lives. All our paradigms are doing is determining what we're thinking, what we're saying, what we're feeling in our heart and all of our actions as well. So awareness is absolutely essential in success for anything. For you to change any of your area of your life, you must be aware. And that's where it starts. You be aware. You're aware that the fear is there. However, what's part of the process is non-judgment. You don't judge it. You simply notice it. And then you could ask yourself, well, what is this fear based on? Where is it coming from? And it could be, you know, a fear of not worthy of success. It could be a fear of, of failure, of what if I do this? What if I try this and it doesn't work? What if I put all my, you know, entire savings, my life savings into this and it doesn't produce the results that I want? And so what are people doing? It's easy to see when you can stand at the sidelines and observe, but what they're doing is they're focusing on things that simply are not real, but they believe them to be real. And if they believe them to be real, it gives it more energy and more focus. And that is not what you want to do. So my suggestion is with fear when it shows up is to simply have the awareness to notice that it's there and then give thanks for it. Now that may sound like an absolutely bizarre thing to do, but you give thanks for it saying, oh, thank you fear for revealing that there is a kink in my hose. There's a crimp here. I've crimped my hose, I'm blocking the flow. So it gives you what? It gives you an opportunity. What is that opportunity? It's an opportunity to convert that fear into faith. Now I wanna give you a little example here. This is a four panel dimmer switch that I purchased at the hardware store. Now I bought this many, many years ago. I bought this in fact, back in 1995. So this little dimmer switch has been in my life for 26 years. And so why did I buy a dimmer switch back in 1995? Because I recognized that our emotions, however we're expressing them, whether they're dark or gloomy, or whether they're positive and light, are controlling what shows up in our life, right? Think about this connected to the electricity in the home. Now, if this was on the wall, and I wanted the light illuminated, what do I do? I turn it all the way to the top, right? I put the switch all the way up to the top and the lights come on. However, if I wanna dim it, if I wanna make the lights a little darker or dimmer, I push it down to the bottom. You see, when I reached a point in 1995 where I made a decision, that's an important part of success, by the way, I made a decision that I was gonna change my life, I bought one of these so that I would focus my attention and energy on feeling only the emotions that are going to support me in the outcomes that I desire. Now, what were those emotions? Well, for me, it was love, faith, worthiness, and what was the other one? Hang on, it's coming to me. <laughs> faith. Okay, so it was love, faith worthiness and it'll come to me in a moment gratitude that's what it was it was gratitude of course you see when people are feeling things that are like oh my goodness i might lose it all like this is not going to happen what if what if what if what if they're they're in a dark place and when you're when you're feeling negative energy whether it's fear what happens is you stop even noticing where the opportunities are, and you certainly don't try. Sometimes people just cower away, go back into bed and pull the covers over their head because they're like, I don't wanna come out. This is scary, it's scary out there. So I suggest that you have the awareness, you notice it's there, and you say, huh, 
I'm going to be thankful for you, fear, for revealing to me what I was believing that simply isn't true and that I'm going to believe a new belief that's going to build the paradigm, which means it enforces and strengthens this emotional muscle within you to have faith. So what would that look like? What would that smell like? What would that taste like? Well, it would go something like this. I absolutely know that my success is guaranteed. My success is absolutely guaranteed. Now, when you say those words and feel the feelings, how does it feel when you say my success is absolutely guaranteed? Do it now. Do it now. Say those words. My success is absolutely guaranteed but feel it when you say it. And you can do this, anyone can do this. Are you doing it now? Are you saying it now? Your success is absolutely guaranteed. I suggest that you do. Do it now, tell me that you're doing it, okay? I wanna hear from you guys here that are on the live class right now. And so when you're feeling that your success is guaranteed, what happens is you've just given energy, it's like you've pumped energy into a muscle, which is an emotional muscle, that causes you to feel better. Now, does that mean that the fear is going to dissipate? Does that mean that the fear is going to be gone from your life? Maybe, maybe in that moment, yeah. Human says you feel unstoppable and powerful. Victoria is saying, I'm feeling this now. Michael says, I feel more confident. Yes, and you know what? All of you made that choice. You made the choice to feel it right now. Thank you, Cheryl. Cheryl's saying it now. Christina says, yes, I love that. Faith is amazing, says Olga. I say this to myself every day in the mirror. Today, it felt especially strong and brought tears to my eyes, happy tears. Well, what Olga just did in that moment was she totally connected to the feeling state of having the faith. Now, when you have faith, you are definitely believing in something that you don't have any evidence of, or you might have evidence. You may have seen someone else that has accomplished what you're looking to accomplish, and that may be enough. But quite often what success requires is to believe in something that you don't see and to believe in something that may seem to other people completely ridiculous. And that's okay because most people are not producing the results that they want in their life. Many people want it, but they're not willing to do the work. Therefore, they remain bound. A lot of people have the desire for more success, but they're not practicing the things or the tools that actually build up the emotional muscles that create that great sense of faith of knowing what you desire is already here. It's absolutely here and it's here right now, right now. Because if you thought it, then you can have it. If you have the thought in your mind, now I have been hearing that for over 40 years and I don't think I really got it until many years afterwards because I remember thinking about doing things or having things or incorporating a business and running a very successful business or being a New York Times bestselling author and having a wonderful loving relationship and I know those desires were there. But what happens is when, when we have the desire, when we feel it pop up within us, which is a natural experience, to have, we push it away or we put a lid on it. We think, oh, that's fine. It might be fine for that person, but it's not fine for me. But you got to act in faith. What does act in faith mean? You know, I was watching a, a session this morning with my wonderful mentor and friend, Bob Proctor. And Bob, I met over 40 years ago, and I met him when he was hired to come and speak at an event uh, for a company I was working for back in Toronto many, many years ago, over 40 years ago. And I remember when Bob started to speak that the things that he was declaring were completely foreign to me. He was talking about success. I had not heard any of these materials before. So when Bob started to talk, it totally interrupted my old way of thinking. It started to, I started to break patterns. And when Bob suggested I invest in myself, there was fear involved. And there were two reasons why there was fear involved. Number one, I was afraid it wasn't going to work for me. And I knew that wasn't a supportive belief system. So I made a decision to change that, to build the faith, recognizing it's going to take some time, just like a seed takes time. 
when you plant it in the earth. Another thing that occurred for me is I made a decision to invest in his programs back then. And I didn't have the money to do it. And I went into debt to do it. Now that was scary. Now, I don't know about any of you, if you've ever had that experience before where you made a decision to go for something, to join a program or to do something or work with a private mentor, and you didn't have the funds at the time, but you did it anyway. And what I've discovered for myself and for many other people is those are great growth experiences because you have leverage on yourself. In other words, you set yourself up that you have no choice but to follow through. And so when I met Bob and Bob did this special presentation, and then he offered to work with him further through some more extensive trainings, I was absolutely there and signing up and registering regardless of the fear. So when you act in faith, sometimes it's known as blind faith, you won't have the evidence of how that's going to happen in your life. You won't know how you're going to accomplish the goal that you set for yourself. You won't know, but I'll tell you when you have the belief, when you build that faith within you, and sometimes it takes time in order to do it, you're going to find that you're going to feel unstoppable as you were talking about in the comments here on the left-hand side, you will begin to feel unstoppable. I think about Vladdy, who's here with us right now. Vladdy, I was blessed to meet less than a year ago, 10 months ago, 10 months ago, I met this young lady. Now, what has she accomplished in such a short period of time? Like she's working with Dynamic Destiny. She's working with my organization now as a Destiny coach. We brought her on. Why? Because I know Vladdy understands these materials because of her results. Because of her results. I've been very blessed to get to know her over the past 10 months. But what she's been doing is studying every single day. Vladdy has been involved in every program that I've offered. Vladdy is someone who recognizes that you must invest in yourself. And what do I see in her? I see me. That's what I see in Vladdy. I see someone who may be feeling the fear, and I'm certain Vladdy felt it as well, may be feeling the fear, but she went for it anyway. Like, look at what Vladdy's accomplished in a very, very short period of time. Vladdy has written a book, self-published a book, brought it out to the world, made it an international bestseller. Now she's a coach. Now she's succeeding. Unlike anything she's ever experienced before, she's working in an industry that she absolutely loves. And she felt the fear. I know she did. And it was very normal. It's very natural to feel the fear. You're going to feel the fear when you're going for your goals. But what happens is the following. When you decide what it is that you'd really love to have in your life, and then you get emotionally involved in it, in other words, feeling in your heart that it's here now, and you choose to strengthen that belief within you, you choose to strengthen that belief within you, what you will find is that just like working on your physical muscles, your emotional muscles get stronger and stronger and stronger over time. But it doesn't happen unless you do the work. I can guide you. I can certainly show you the way, but you must do the work. You've got to do the work, but it's not hard work. I was thinking about this this morning. I was thinking about when Brian Proctor and I decided to write the book darn easy together. And we chose that subject because we found that both Brian Proctor and myself, we both created success in our lives with ease while having wonderful balance, you know, balance. What do I mean by balance? We balance our life, ensuring that we're not only doing the things that we love in our careers, but we're also enjoying quality time with our loved ones, with our friends, time on our own. So we've got this wonderful sense of balance in our life and not a lot of people do. And some people believe that if you really want success, you've got to bust your butt. In other words, you got to work 20 six hours in a 24 hour day. Well, we know that's not possible, but a lot of people think that. And if they think that they're not even going to go for it. You see, most people have all kinds of beliefs that it simply aren't true, but they believe they're true. And therefore they're doing nothing. They're doing nothing. They're doing nothing to change their life, but nothing stays the same. 
things are either getting better or they're getting worse. But if we think about darn easy as a concept of choosing for your life to be easy, of allowing things to unfold for you. Now, what a lot of people think that means is you take your foot off the gas, meaning you're not doing anything, right? You're not progressing, you're not moving forward. And no, that's not true. What you're doing is you're becoming one with your goal as if it's in your life now. And throughout your day, you're walking around assuming that what you desire is already here right now. So where is all the actual work, the construction, if you will, where's it all going on? Inside. And we don't always see it. Like we live in a neighborhood where it's a relatively new neighborhood. This home was built five years ago. They've just built another street uh, just around the corner from us where they're going to be putting in a bunch more homes. And the thing is, when there's construction going on, we see it right? We can see the progress. We can see the foundation going in. We can see the boards going up. We can see as they put the roof on, the tresses on, and then they start to, you know, close it in. We can see it evolve. But when you're working on your goal and you're doing the work, meaning the mental work, the, the emotional work, when you're doing that, you're not seeing the construction going on. You're not seeing the progress. And so what happens? What happens is a lot of people just give up, give up. But I do know this, if they started, there's a home just two doors down from us, big, giant, beautiful home. If they had started that home and started to build it, laid the foundation, put up the sides, the walls, maybe, you know, put the roof on or whatever, and just thought, ah, forget it, abandon it, it would be sad, right? They got this beautiful home that's already under construction. That's what a lot of people do with their goals. They get the goals. They're like, oh, I'd really love to have that maybe even get involved in a program or two, maybe read some books and start to study and discipline themselves every day that they're working on the things. And then they get to a point where they're like, I'm not seeing any results. Why is this not happening? Or they look at their bank account. And they're like, you know, this is not where I desire it to be. What do they do? They get frustrated. And it's like they just uprooted the whole garden that they've planted. Now, why does that happen? Lack of faith. But when you have unwavering faith, when you know that what you desire is already there, if you thought it, you can have it. If you hold it in your mind, you'll have it in your hand. Or if you have it in your mind, you'll hold it in your hand. Now, I believe that's a very true statement and I wanna elaborate on that. I think it's important to have it in your consciousness, to have it in your mind, and feel it in your heart, then you'll hold it in your hand. But you're feeling it in your heart as if it's here now. This is how you're gonna manifest. This is how you're gonna manifest it. And the whole process of feeling it in your heart now is the building of the faith. And it is eliminating the fear because with faith, there can be no fear. When your dimmer switch, when your switch, is on high in other words you're only feeling the faith as if you have that which you desire absolutely no possibility for fear they're at the same end of the scale you're not going to be feeling fear while feeling faith you're not going to be feeling faith while feeling fear you want to be focused only on the emotion of faith which is going to strengthen your belief and have you experience what you desire in your life it's a simple, simple idea, very simple process, but the challenge is it may not be easy. And the reason why it's not easy is because of the conditioning you're involved with. Think about it. Think about your practices, your behaviors, the habits that you're involved in. These are all things that are either contributing to or taking away from what you desire. So I think it's important to really pay attention to what are you thinking? What are you feeling? And when you feel the fear, are you ready? Boom, to snap yourself out of the fear and into faith. Now I have a technique that I use to snap myself out of fear and move myself into faith. And it is a powerful technique. And it's just a couple very simple steps. So the first step is I notice it's there. I notice the fear is there and say, Oh, I recognize you. You're just simply revealing to me something that I've been believing that's not true. Okay, what do I choose to believe? I choose to believe in the outcome that I desire. 
Okay, what is it then? What would I love? That's the next part of it. What would I love? What would I love in this experience? What would I love in my life? And then I connect to what I would love, feeling as if it's here right now. That's the process that I go through to change the fear and move it into faith. Because as you saw from the switch is that it's faith is the opposite end of fear. So you want to be focusing on the fear uh, or the faith as well and taking action that demonstrates that you have the faith. You'd make decisions that demonstrate that you have faith. All right, everyone, I wish you a spectacular day. Make sure you check out the links that Celine has posted there for you. And I'll see you again next week at the uh, Re Realizing Your Full Potential. All right, have a wonderful day. We'll see you again real soon.